In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have final quiz questions and remediation for a video in Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and please share this video with your e-learning friends. I got a message from one of the viewers of my YouTube channel, and they asked about inserting questions into a long video presentation. For instance, their team records a Zoom presentation and wants graded questions inserted at various points in the video, but also wants remediation. If they answer the question wrong, they get sent back to the section of the video which covers the topic. I assume bookmarks versus return to timeline is used. Thanks, Captivate Newbie. One of the challenges with interactive video where you could position a bunch of quiz questions or question slides throughout a video is that you are restricted to knowledge check questions. So if I was to use the interactive video feature or the overlay feature to insert questions as we go through the video, I would be limited to only knowledge check questions. If you need graded questions that will contribute to a score, they'll have to reside outside of the overlay feature. But I think I have a solution that works pretty good and includes remediation that might work out well for you in this case here. So let's go ahead and take a look at Adobe Captivate. I'll open up a new instance of Adobe Captivate. I'll go ahead and create a new project. And on my first slide, I'm going to insert a slide video. I guess technically you could use video, but you wouldn't be able to do the bookmark remediation stuff. So let's stick with slide video in this case here. I'm going to click on the icon in the middle of the video to replace this default video with one of my own. I'll select system because this is a video that I have on my computer. In my case, I recorded something in Teams, Microsoft Teams. The process would be similar if it was Zoom or other such recording meeting software. You just need to know where the location of those videos are. So I'm going to select this TriStar meeting I had here and click on Open. And that replaces the default video with one of my own. Incidentally, it also extends my timeline to match the duration of this particular video. And it's quite long, of course. The other thing I'm going to need here is the ability to return to my final quiz once I've reviewed the video. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll click on the Add Interactive Components icon and select Button. Now, I'm just gonna resize this a little bit here. Let's first of all minimize my timeline so we can see the full slide here. A Couple things I like to do. I'll center that button. We'll call that button return to quiz. And actually, we'll go ahead and assign that very same action to it. When someone clicks on return to quiz, they will literally return to quiz. That's the, the action that you would choose in this case here. Now in this case here, I'm going to resize this video so that we're using as much of the screen as possible. And with the video block selected, we can choose auto fit height to ensure that it uses all the space possible. And might not make a difference, but I'll just make the width 100%. Yeah, it did make a little bit of a difference there, okay? So on this slide, we've got our video, we've got the return to quiz. This block, this the entire return to quiz option here, I'm going to go ahead and hide it during publish. So the default view of this button block that includes our return to quiz button will be hidden during publish. So. The first time you arrive on this slide, you won't see that button block there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a multiple choice question. This is a graded question. I'm going to have four answers. The answer for this will always be answer one, which is fine. 
but I'm going to shuffle those answers by selecting the shuffle answers icon so that the correct answer could be any one of these here. Now, while I have one question only, I'm going to show my caption and it says here, that's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. Let's select this and I'm actually going to change that a little bit. We'll just make the text white. I'm going to go to the incorrect caption now, do the same thing, but I'm also going to edit the message. So if they try this question and get it wrong, I'm going to say that's incorrect. Click anywhere or press Y. And in this case here to review the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this three times because I have three different pieces of knowledge in this video that I'm going to be testing. The first question is going to be, what Outlook feature can you use to deal with spam when the spam comes from a different email address but contains similar words? So the correct answer is option one here. And the correct actual answer is the rules feature. I'll put in a couple of distractors here, block, spam, auto reply. These are all wrong answers. And now let's go to our second multiple choice. And the question for that will be, if you wanted to translate some text to another language, which Office application is ideal for that task? I'll type in MS Word as the correct answer, MS Excel, MS PowerPoint, MS Outlook. So for our third question, we'll ask, what Office application can you use to edit CSV files? The correct answer is MS Excel. We'll put some distractors in here, MS Word, MS PowerPoint, MS Outlook. Let's go back up to our video slide and I'm just going to position this in the video where I start to talk about rules. Somewhere around there looks good. I'll press the plus bookmark icon in the bookmark swim lane. And we will call this Outlook because that's what we're talking about here. And you'll see the Outlook in our interactions section of our properties inspector. Don't worry too much about this exclamation mark. That's simply warning us that we haven't assigned an action for this bookmark. So let's go to our first multiple choice slide. And if they're successful, they'll just go to the next slide, which is ideal. If they've submitted a an incorrect answer and this is their last attempt, we're going to change the action for this. I'm going to double click on this. We'll click on more and we're going to choose jump to bookmark. And in this case, we'll go back and learn about the portion of the video that contains information about Outlook. Click done. And we're going to repeat that for the other two options. So the next question is about Microsoft Word. So let's find that portion of the video here. And I think it's around the 196 second mark. Let's play a little bit of it. Open up Microsoft Word. That sounds about right to me. So we'll do it here and we'll call this Word. Okay, so let's go to our second question here. Let's go back to the Visual Properties Inspector and did I change it for all of them here? Yes, I did. So let's go to Interactions. And again, the last attempt is what we wanna change. And we will go to jump to bookmark and we'll select word done. Okay. Back up to our video here. So now we have two of our three bookmarks done. Let's go to our third bookmark, which I believe is around 350 seconds into somewhere around there. Let's play a little bit of this tone of maybe a regional 
version of a particular language, okay? Okay, so I think it's right there. So I'll click on the plus diamond icon in our bookmark swim lane, and we will call this one Excel. Okay, so we'll go down to our third question here. Under last attempt, we'll change the action to jump to bookmark, and we'll choose Excel. Done. And one last thing that we need to do on slide enter, this is a slide level interaction. We need to either show this button or not if we are in quiz mode. So let's click the plus icon here on slide enter. We're going to make this a conditional action and we'll click on the plus icon and we're going to use a system variable under system here. We'll scroll down until we get to the quiz set or question set of, uh, and we're looking for quiz in scope. So in other words, if we are in scope of the quiz, we're already answering questions. We want to show this return to quiz button. So let's click on that. So if quiz in scope is equal to a value of true, press save then we are going to show, and in this case, I wanna show the entire content section. So we'll select that and press next, and then done. Now there's an if portion of this, but there's also an else portion. In other words, if the first part of the condition is not true, then we're going to hide the block button. So let's do that add a new action, it will be hide, content sections, and we'll choose the block button, and next, and done. So now we're good to test this out, let's hit preview. So we're not seeing our return to quiz button, we would watch the video. You could hide the play bar and then add a different button that only shows up at the end of the video, and that can be done on the timeline itself. But for our purposes here, we'll keep the play bar in intact. Okay, so this is just a test. And I'll move forward. Let's say I watch the whole video. So what Outlook feature can you use to deal with spam when the spam comes from a different email address? The correct answer is rules. So let's purposely get this wrong. Press submit. Since that's incorrect, click anywhere or press Y to review the video. So if I click uh, anywhere... If that's not the case, another thing you can do is... I'll just mute the video. I return to the portion of the video where we talk about the rules feature. And now, of course, the return to quiz button is available. I press that and I can correctly answer. Obviously, if I'm paying attention, I now know this and I've learned this particular capability. Let's hit submit. Now we can proceed to the next question. Let's get it wrong again. So in this case here, this is not an Outlook feature, but I'll, I'll choose that. Press submit. Oh no, I've got it wrong again. Now it jumps me to the bookmark where we learn about Microsoft Word and how you can use it to translate text. So I can return to the quiz at this point get the right answer, press submit. Because of course, you know, e-learning is not about forcing people to fail or pass. Ultimately, we want people to learn. So click anywhere, press Y to continue. What, what office application can you use to edit CSV files? Let's get this wrong again, MS Word, submit. And we're gonna review the video again. It takes us to that point in the video where we learn how Microsoft Excel is actually the tool that can help us with this task. So return to quiz, Microsoft Excel, and I get 100%. I'm awesome. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.